This episode was made possible thanks to our amazing partner, KiwiCo. The start of a new year is always a great time to discover something new. And with KiwiCo, you or the kid in your life can make new discoveries all year long. I especially love the Kiwi Crate where you get to do a whole science experiment by creating your own paper trees and then you guys, watching the leaves change color based on the color paint it is sitting in. I know. It is so cool, right? So KiwiCo does the legwork to find creative ways to keep your kids busy and challenged. It's a great tool to use to help children discover something new and spark their imagination. And there's no commitment, so you can pause or cancel anytime. Redefine learning with play and get 50% off, 5-0, 50% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line with the code mini BFF at KiwiCo.com. That's 50% off your first month at K-I-W-I-C-O.com, promo code M-I-N-I-B-F-F. Hi, friends. Welcome to the Mini BFF Podcast. I am your host and friend, Annie F. Downs, and I'm so excited to be with you all for a couple of minutes today and share a little story from one of my favorite books, the Bible. No matter where you are or what you've been up to, I love that I get to spend this time with you. Hey, Mini BFFs, you may know this, but every Monday night at 6 p.m. Central over on Instagram Live, I read a book to you. It's my favorite night of the week where I get to say hi to all of my friends and share the artwork you've sent in. And today I want to give an extra shout out to my friend May. Hi, May. We love that you love the podcast and we are so thankful to have you as a Mini BFF. All right, friends, let me tell you how this podcast is going to go. First, I'm going to tell you a story, and then we'll pray together. And then I'm going to ask you to draw something fun for me, because we love drawing pictures at Mini BFF Book Club. So we have to draw them for the Mini BFF podcast, too. And however much you love drawing them, I love seeing them that much more. Okay, are you ready to get started with our story? Me too. This one is called The Forgiving Brother. Here we go. Hey, mini BFFs, have you ever had to say sorry before? Maybe it was to a friend or your sister or brother or maybe even to your parents. I've had to say sorry before. I make a lot of mistakes. We all do. I don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want anyone to hurt me, but it's going to happen. We are going to make mistakes. You know what always helps me when I make a mistake? Saying I'm sorry to the person that I hurt. You know what is almost as hard as saying I'm sorry is saying I forgive you. Because when a friend says something mean or your little brother knocks down your latest creation, it makes you upset, right? Well, it hurts your feelings and you want to be mad or sad about it for a while. And all those feelings are okay to feel, trust me. I know from watching the movie Inside Out that you need all the different feelings to be a kid, to be a person. It can't always just be joy, although I really do love joy. Remember Joseph, who we learned about in last week's episode? Remember how his brothers were mad at him because their hearts were so jealous about his coat? I mean, they were so mad that they sent him away to another country, to Egypt. Now, I just feel like I need to say, I know little brothers or sisters can be frustrating sometimes, but many BFFs, whatever you do, don't send them to another country, okay? It's not going to be good for anyone, and I don't think your parents would be too happy about it, right? Right. Remember how Pharaoh had a dream where there would be seven years of lots of food and seven years where there wasn't any? So because Joseph was able to figure out what his dream meant, Egypt was able to prepare for those seven years where there was no food to be found. They spent the first seven years saving grain for the people of Egypt so that they would still be able to make food where there wasn't any new food growing. People came from all over to get grain from Egypt because they didn't have any at home. And guess who was in charge of handing out all the grains? Joseph. That's right. Now, Jacob, Joseph's dad, had heard that there was grain in Egypt. So he sent his older sons to go there to bring some home. He kept the youngest brother, Benjamin, at home with him. Joseph was handing out food when he saw his brothers standing in line. He recognized that they were his brothers, but they didn't recognize him. So Joseph treated them the same as everyone else in line to get food. In fact, he was a little harsh. He asked them where they were from and what they were doing here. He even asked them if they were spies, even though he knew they weren't. The brothers told Joseph that they were servants and from the land of Canaan, where they lived with their father and younger brother. They were nervous around Joseph, but not because they knew he was Joseph. Joseph decided to test them a a couple of times, actually. First, he put them in jail for three days, and then he released all of them but one. 
Simon, and told his brothers to go home and bring back Benjamin, his littlest brother. Then when they came back, Joseph snuck a silver cup into Benjamin's bag and acted like Benjamin had stolen it. And then Joseph tried to keep Benjamin and not let him go home. Yeah, many BFFs. It was rough for Joseph's brothers, and they felt it. In fact, they blamed all the hardship that was coming from Joseph on the fact that they were being punished for sending their brother Joseph to another country. Joseph actually heard his brothers saying this. One of his brothers, Judah, started begging Joseph to let Benjamin go back home because they were so worried about how sad their father would be without Benjamin. And eventually, Joseph started to feel bad. In fact, he felt so bad that he started to cry a lot. I also wonder if Joseph was realizing his own mistakes and the way he was treating his brothers and if that made his heart sad too. In that moment, something in his heart shifted from anger to forgiveness. He turned to his brothers and he said, I am Joseph, your brother. And now don't be angry with yourself for sending me here because God sent me ahead of you to preserve life. Because Joseph was in Egypt, the people of Egypt would be saved from hunger during the seven years of famine. In that moment, Joseph learned that it was better for his heart to forgive than it was to stay angry. It took him a little while to figure it out, though. I mean, throwing your brothers in jail and setting them up to look like they'd stolen something isn't exactly showing forgiveness, but eventually he got there. Joseph decided showing love to his brothers instead of hate was what would make his heart feel whole. You know who I bet helped him forgive his brothers? God. We see a lot in Joseph's story of how much God is with Joseph. And with God's help, Joseph realizes that because his brothers sent him to Egypt, God was able to use Joseph in a way he could have never imagined. In fact, later on in the story, Joseph tells his brothers when they begged for forgiveness again because they still felt bad, he said, you planned evil against me. God planned it for good. God really was with Joseph, and God is with you. Every time you get your feelings hurt, God is there. Every time your little brother knocks down your newest block tower, God is there. And every time you make a mistake, God is there. So when it comes time to say sorry or to show forgiveness, many BFFs, I hope you'll remember that God is there. He will help you find the words to say when apologizing for your mistakes. And he will also help you find forgiveness when someone tells you they are sorry. You just have to ask him to help because no matter what, God is there. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for creating us with hearts that can forgive when others say they are sorry. Help us to remember that you are always there with us. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Goodness, talk about Joseph teaching us how to show some forgiveness, right? Woo! I really like this story, mini BFFs. So for our drawing today, can you draw me a picture of Joseph and his brothers? Remember, there were 12 of them. I know, that's a lot. But it'd be really fun to see what you think they all looked like. So draw a picture and then grab a grown-up to post and tag on Instagram, mini BFF book club, or mail it to us, P.O. Box 121826, Nashville, Tennessee, 37212. Mini BFFs, thank you so much for spending time with me today. I am always so happy to have you here with us. Remember, be kind to your grown-ups, your teachers, and your friends, and your brothers and sisters. I'll see you next time. And hey, grownups, if you want to talk more about today's story, we read from Genesis chapters 42 through 45. Bye, mini BFFs. Love you, mean it.